So one of the biggest questions I get on stream is always, what should I craft for profit? How do I sell it? What do I do? This and that. So I thought I would take a chance to make a series and kind of go over crafting all of the different items in Albion, what tiers I craft, how I sell it, how I transport it, and all that information so you guys can begin to earn your beginning silver crafting as, like I say all the time on stream, crafting is by far until you get a mammoth the number one way for you to make silver as an econ or just an albion player in general so first so i have here about enough cloth to i believe fill one transport ox to the black market so i thought i'd just do one trip so you can see obviously it'll take you a little bit longer to craft them if you don't have a mammoth but these should be about exactly the amount you can carry you'll be about 180 percent overweight on the ox but obviously it'll get lighter when you craft it so if you're, i just take it over to the plot here craft it and then obviously i won't be transporting it to a mammoth because that would be unrealistic so i'll hop on an ox I already have the transport set that I usually use, and we can see here, I usually, whatever I'm crafting for this video to be cloth sandals, obviously, I usually try to craft just an even number of every type. I don't really worry too much about, oh, one type is worth 500 more silver than the other type. I'm just going to craft that one because I try to make sure that I'm targeting liquidity over just raw silver. I'd rather craft a little bit of each type and have it sell faster than to craft all of the same one and just get undercut obviously the majority of the other people if they're going and they want to craft these tier five cloth sandals they're going to go to the black market and some of them might look and they say oh you know for example clerics are worth more than mage sandals right now i'm just going to make cleric sandals but if everybody does that obviously if you're crafting cleric sandals when they're the most expensive you're much more likely to get undercut and the black market has the same demand regardless of type the only change in price to the black market is purely like player supply driven. So if people see one price going up, they're going to funnel a bunch of supply into that item and the prices will kind of equal out eventually. But with that out of the way, I will craft these and you guys can see about how many I craft. There's no daily bonus or anything. Make sure that when you are crafting your item, make sure you're crafting it in the bonus city. You can see here I have a bonus for cloth shoes and also play armor here. I usually like to do the armors, so we're doing cloth shoes first. And we'll see how much about four stacks of tier five will make us. craft 263 of these cloth sand, uh, cloth sandals and again these should fill about an ox if they don't we can always adjust for future videos i also want to uh, make sure you guys keep in mind quality of the shoes doesn't necessarily matter if you're selling to the black market getting a masterpiece especially these lower tiers is going to sell for the exact same amount as a normal and that's what i would list them for on the black market now for those of you guys that were paying attention you might have noticed that my estimated market value actually went down while i was crafting those and don't worry too much about that we'll go over the costs and everything and you'll see that the black market is often much much higher than the estimated market price just for an example, I went and checked these beforehand. I believe these were selling for between seven to 9,000 silver. Here, it's only saying they're worth 5,000. So obviously the estimated market value of these way, way, way below what we're actually be able to get for them in Carlion. But we'll go over the costs when I sell to the black market. Now it's super simple. That's all it is. I went and instantly bought these off the market. I didn't even buy order these. Obviously, if you're doing this in bulk, you want to be buy ordering journals, buy ordering the material. But just for the sake of education, I go through just bought them all so if anything if you guys do this you will get even better prices if you buy order or buy in Limhurst or whatever else 
yeah, all in all, it took about three, four minutes tops, and uh, we're ready to go to the black market. So all that's left is to hop on the ox, and we'll head there. I'll sell these journals, make sure we get an accurate price for those, and then we will take all the cloth shoes to Carlion and see how much they're worth. Back at my usual zone where I transport from, and we'll grab the cloth armor here. Ignore the other stuff that I have transporting. I made sure to sort this out. And this is the cloth armor. You'll notice in tomorrow's video as well, I did these back to back, and I definitely undercrafted. So you can see. Uh, also, if you're wondering why the estimated market value is so much lower, it's because I don't have the journals in the estimated price now, obviously. Whereas before, I had a couple hundred journals, uh, increasing the price quite a bit by a couple hundred thousand to a million. But we can take these to the black market. And honestly, I just want to show you guys, like, if you go during off-peak times, like, right now isn't even, like, that off-peak for West server. It's a fairly busy time. You know, it's right in the middle of the afternoon in NA. Like, it's not the busiest time, but it's definitely not the least busy. And there are uh, basically nobody in the red zone. Like, I've seen a death here or there. There's been a few reds, but there's no big gank squads. And honestly, when you're doing, like, these small trips, like, I don't even bother bringing like a fort sterling cape like i don't think there's any reason to risk a fort sterling cape i don't think there's any reason to bother with like the gigantify potions or whatever things like that like you really just it's kind of adopting the mindset at least when you're early on doing like the low tier stuff like this of just like quantity over quality right like you don't need to nor should you want to survive every single trip like i would not want to bring a you know a 100 to 200,000 silver Fort Sterling cape uh you know multi 100,000 if not million silver mount with potions and all this stuff but higher tier gear like there just is no reason this entire risk is about 150,000 silver other than obviously the gear that I'm transporting really like I see no reason to risk more than that for such a small amount of product cuz yes you keep in mind like you spend a million silver and obviously you're increasing your chance of survival but you're still not guaranteed to survive like if you run into a group of 10 gankers then there was really no reason for you to risk an extra 1 to 2 million silver right like you were going to die whether you were in tier 3 or tier 8 so especially for these lower tier like obviously if you're transporting 83 and all this like hc maps and all this stuff then it's a completely different story. But for this low tier stuff, like just go, honestly. Like if you feel uncomfortable about going into the red zone, then just bring a friend, like find somebody to transport, do this with somebody else. If you don't have a friend that just wants to scout for you and like not do anything, like find somebody who also wants to do these transports and just do them together. Like worst case scenario, if there are gankers, the chance of them killing both of you is incredibly low. And just the fact, like bringing a second person with you just divides up the risk, right? So imagine for example just as a mental you know thing imagine you die one out of every two two uh, routes right you're losing 50 percent of everything you transport whereas if you just bring an extra person like i said they're not going to get both of you so even if one of you is still dying every 50 per or like one out of every two trips you bring your risk down from you know dying every trip to dying every other trip because obviously which one of you dies is going to is going to switch up so you can bring your risk down from 50 percent to 25 percent same amount of deaths just by you know just herd mentality so keep that in mind definitely bring a friend if you can it'll massively 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 increase your profits per hour and both of you guys can transport at the same time i wouldn't even bother just having for this lower tier stuff i wouldn't bother having bodyguards or somebody just on a horse scouting for you just both of you guys transport and just chill you can see like there's literally nobody in these zones if you play during off-peak times or banded us all this stuff like that there's literally like nobody in the red zone these days i highly recommend giving it another shot now Obviously, if a hundred or a thousand of you guys go out and do this, like 10 of you guys are going to die on your first trip and you're going to be really mad about that. But like, it's just power to the course, you know, quantity over quality. But that's really all there is to it. Boom, profit. Both of the trips from today and tomorrow are brought here. And we'll go check out the Blackberry and see how much they're worth. I suppose while I have this in my inventory, we can just do the cloth shoes first. Now, I will have on screen the total cost as well as the profit from the trip. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, I've been able to do upwards of seven of these trips per hour. So if you can take an hour to get the trips there and an hour to get them to Carlion, then you're looking at about two hours of transport and you do seven to eight trips. Most likely, even better so, because you can get like a tier A ox or a bear or an elite winter bear or something like that to transport them to the yellow zone. And then you just hop on a cheaper mountain, transport them back and forth. Like that's what I do with my mammoth. Obviously not all you guys are gonna have a mammoth right away, but we'll go through and tally this up and see how much silver we get for selling all of these. All right, we listed everything on the market. Obviously I have a bunch of stuff listed, so we gotta scroll down here, but all the sandals are listed. And if you total it up, 
comes out to being after the setup fee, just under 2.8 million. And I will have on screen here, you can see all of the costs. The transport cost is pretty low, but that's because obviously I'm not gonna factor in the cost of all of the gear to transport unless I die. So just factoring in the cost of the pork pie, which is basically nothing and can be divvied out into multiple trips. But that is it for today's video. Not always a, the biggest fan of the cloth shoes, but thought I'd uh, thought I'd show you. And obviously, you can see three hundred fifty thousand profit is nothing to scoff at. As like I said, you can do upwards of six of these per hour. And as you get better and better carrying weight mounts, once you can do like tier eight oxes, elite winter bears, you can probably get up to uh, up to about two million silver per hour from doing these. And that's not on a daily production bonus. Obviously, you can stockpile five o cloth, wait for a daily bonus, craft it all in the daily bonus, and get even more profit than that. But hope you guys enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you guys at the Twitch stream. You can come, link in the description, watch all this stuff live, and see how I make my silver. But with that out of the way, I will see you guys again in the next video.